I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun video with the best AA destroyers in the game, in my personal opinion, which is the Ragnar and the Holland. Right now, first video will be with the Ragnar. Let's take a look at the power of what this dang thing can do, especially the long-range gun build, as well as just basic AA, nothing too fancy, nothing too spectacular. But man, does this thing just, uh, just is totally awesome with its base firepower. But as always, before we begin, if you see uh, value in the channel, like subscribe bell button below. Appreciate all the support at 4,000 subs. We're going to do another premium giveaway as always. Thank you guys so much for making this channel great, making this community a better place and trying to crush toxicity while making this a fun environment as well as learning something at the same time. So let's get right to it. G guns blazing, open and fire. At the gearing, what is my first priority? I always take out every single destroyer on the map as, as soon as possible at the best of my ability because why? Again, if you take out the destroyers, you increase the probability of winning the match. That's my personal opinion, and it's actually based on statistics and the amount of games I've played. It just seems to work out that way. Likewise, I'm a DD main. If you take out me as a destroyer player in the game, most likely you're going to see your team lose. I'm sorry, your team win, my team lose, uh, because, it, again, the destroyer is the key component of the game, in my personal opinion, as well. But you let me know what you think about that. But as always, Ragnar, people have asked me, hey, what do you think of Ragnar lately? And again, I'm one of my favorite destroyers. Really, it just focuses on one thing. And, you know, I've always said, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, right? But if you would just focus on one aspect, which is guns and having the radar to help with out with those guns, long range gun build, man, this thing really does shine my personal opinion about how you can really employ this weapon system and really just take the fight to the enemy as well as just get wreak havoc on literally the entire opposing force. And they just literally can't do anything about it. Right now, we're going to take out the destroyer player as best as you can. Look at that. These shells hit like a Mack truck. Like, see, look, just getting those basic hits right there. And although it is devastating when it hits you, man, you are also supporting your team as well as shooting. Here comes the power of the AA. Look at that. 1,500 damage on the AA planes right there. Boom, boom, boom. The thing I like about the Ragnar and the Holland is because they do a lot of continuous damage. Continuous damage means that you don't have to shoot flat clouds to get the damage. And because flat clouds can be dodged in the game, um, but continuous damage cannot. It was a, that's just the damage that's continuously ticking down uh, second by second. And uh, Ragnar has the highest from the destroyer roll, literally coming in at about, I believe, 600-ish plus. And uh, the Smallin and Holland, which are basically practically the same AA, have about 375-ish. Uh, for uh, continuous DP damage. So that's why those things ranked in the highest. I mean, every second you're knocking about 375 to 600 uh, a second. So very, very strong, powerful, especially when the longer they sit in your AA bubble and the more and more damage you get, they're just slowly ticking away and dying. And that's something I really do enjoy. Now the flat clouds are like a bonus. Uh, if you guys don't know what a flat cloud is, just like an AA gun fires a shell up in the air, it bursts, explodes, and, that will and if the plane is around that burst, that is causing a majority of the damage, very, very high damage, like in the thousands. Um, but again, the downside is that the player, the opposing player can dodge it. So that's why I don't like too, too much of the flat cows because they're computer generated things that a player can dodge. Kind of like secondaries, right? Secondaries are aimed by the computer and a, a good player can, and once they figure out the rhythm, can dodge it. So right now we got our AA on the whole time. Look, I have not turned it off. Literally, look at the top right there. The, the, look at the amount of DPS is coming up on the planes right there. 33,000 already in the first five minutes of the game. I mean, I'm literally destroying destroyers worth of uh, airplanes. And I think that's just ridiculous that an airplane can keep sending me like the waves and waves of little destroyers or health poles and can just continuously kill me. But again, I digress. I was a video for uh, just basically hating on CVs. But anyways, we're doing our job here. We're keeping the destroyers at bay we killed the destroyers on our side we are eliminating the aa on our side uh, or killing all the planes on our side we are capping a at our side we are also providing gun power support for our ohio over here we're also trying to spot as well so we're doing literally everything we can possibly do aa is on right there turning on a thousand 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 look at all those damaging flat clouds right there and the notice the continuous dp damage about 600 to 589 hitting every single uh, second right there and that is where the bread and butter look at that we're constantly still ticking up damage 
up to 48,000 right now. Still shooting away. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. He's still going down. And we're taking out also the Louisianas, which is the hybrid battleships that have planes themselves. So we are literally the AA platform. I think this is a great video of showing that there's so much air power in the game nowadays in a World of Warship game. Remember that, mind you. And we're also providing a majority of the uh, anti-aircraft gun fire support as well. So right now, let me see if I can focus on this Laria. I believe I don't really do too much. He's just going back and forth on the throttle, and I'm kind of just sitting in the middle. We have three caps. I don't know why, why people are pushing, honestly. I can just literally, you can just literally hold Alpha, Bravo, and Delta and kind of just guard at this moment and not do anything. And we'd probably win based on points, but again, Nah, this is World of Warships. I mean, people love to throw games all the time, so I have to keep monitoring the minimap, making sure my teams don't act the fool and do stupid things as well. AA is, again, still turned on, and you get the long-range DPS on the, the guns are very, very weak. You can see they're 22, 22, 11. Not much. I'm kind of getting a little pea shooter here, but once they enter that 4-kilometer range, look at the flat clouds at 4 kilometers. Boom, right there. Boom, boom. Medium damage, continuous. A lot of firepower right there. He gets a shot at me where he knows in profile, slim profile. You see his spread is long ways, and he only gets about 7 700 off. Meanwhile, we take about a, a few thousand off of him. 61,000 damage on the AA right now, and we are still seven minutes past in the game. Let's go ahead and continuously spot for our team. Alpha Bravo are secure. Uh, Des Moines is running away. There's carriers over there. I'm going to what? I'm going to elect to go over here to Delta sector and try to help my team out. Again, this is why I encourage you destroyer players to literally blow up your minimap so that you can see where you are needed because destroyers are quick, nimble, fast, and maneuverable because they are the quick reaction force. It, it sounds funny uh, because we are the smallest, uh, I would say, vessel in the game besides the submarines, but we are the ones that have to respond to everything. Literally spotting, torpedoing, gunpowder, uh, and really just smoking up people. Whatever we can do to help our team out because everybody's slow and big and they're uh, prime targets for everybody else. Here come the Louisiana planes. Look at these guys. These are in a division right here. Look, now we're shooting two sets of airplanes. AA on the whole time. Let's see. Come on. And they're running away. See, they know what the power of the Ragnar is. These players know what they're dealing with, so they're going to run away. And fear. That's the, what we want to do. We want to put the fear of the AA gods in their face. And look at that. One Louisiana that's coming in uh, attack on us right now. We are ticking up the damage. And we are slowly killing them, slowly killing them. Does he want to try a bomb run on us? Oh, he does. Ballsy move, Cotton. And let's see. Oh, and he bup kisses it right there. And now we're getting shot by Marceau. Battleships, airplanes. Again, we are literally supporting our Wisconsin and Summers, taking the majority of the bulk of the damage. And we got tons of potential damage we can do. Torpedoes galore from the Summers right there, taking on the Bismarck. But you know what? Nothing beats the bread and butter of consistent firepower guns. If you guys don't know, these are 151-ish, 152-millimeter guns. Coming out of the barrels at 900 meters per second. Doing penetration of 30 millimeter armor, so really majority of the bulk of ships we will uh, pin the armor unless they're 32 mils and above. But you know what? A lot of the cruisers are baked in 30 mil or less. Superstructure is obviously easy targets, but this thing starts fires like a kerosene lighter. I mean, this thing is awesome at doing that. And again, at long range distances, very good. Outside of secondary range, is very very comfortable. And in, even here's the bread and butter of what the engine boost of the Smallin and the Ragnar cousins do. The engine boost literally allows you plus 30% back and forth, back and forth throttle juking, and it's so hard to hit a Ragnar and a small one because you can literally just use your throttle and juke a lot of these incoming shots, especially about a 12 kilometer range or greater. It's very, very difficult to be shooting lobbing shells. Look, you can see Marceau is struggling right there just to kind of land these shells because it's so difficult, unpredictable for a player that's literally using engine boost and throttle juking back and forth. Meanwhile, we're still starting fires consistently on the Bismarck right now and we are literally just aiming for superstructure damage and he's also getting bombed right there and ooh, that was a nice hit for us and we're going to see if we can seal the deal on Bismarck and boom splash one he goes down 42,000 damage with the 10 minutes passed in the game and now we are now let's see here 69,000 AA damage now where are we needed right now we need to go kill that Marceau at Delta so guess what that's our role we have a radar we have big guns we got speed We've got the armor. Let's go ahead and take the fight to the enemy right here. Going against the Marceau, who only has about 3,000 damage. I don't care about friend saturation. These guns will pop you in the mouth. And there is nothing you can do. The good thing is he doesn't have any heals. So I know anything that I fire at him will stick. Meanwhile, we have the heals. And that's why I like think heals are very, very important if you want to be a gunboat main. 
And there you go. Way to go midway right there. Although I hate your class, you did a good job at killing a destroyer. Anyways, let's get right to it. Killing another... Oh, we've got airplanes attacking us right now. Look, we are up to a 90,000 AA damage. And the air carrier really loves to hunt us down because he knows we are the most impactful player of the game because we are shooting all his planes down. We get AA Defense Expert right there. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. AA Defense Expert shooting 99,000 damage worth of planes. We literally have blown up a battleship's worth of airplanes, and he still has airplanes to send at us. T tells you the nature of the game right now. Anyways, let's focus on the Zao right now, shooting 152 millimeter shells, 900 meters per second at 12.6 kilometers, coming all the way from downtown, and we're going to make sure we hit him, because majority of the shells we fire will pin uh, his armor plating, so we're going to keep trying to do that and also start fires because fires on cruisers uh, last a long, long time and it's very, very difficult to get rid of them. And you can see the range we're shooting at right here, even though he can't see us right now, but we can see him. That's the power of spotting. Way to go, Summers. And again, this is a combination of a gunboat uh, DD main right here with a spotter of a Summers or a torpedo boat is devastating for a lot of cruiser players. You can't do anything about it other than, hey, he's going to keep his guns aimed at me. He can't do anything about it. And he fires and reveals his position again. Again, he gets another fire right there. And meanwhile, while his guns are still looking at me, he un un uh, or unforgets that there's a Wisconsin looking at him full broadside, and that's the power of what a DD gunboat main loves to do. We love to sucker you into aiming at us so that you will forget that there's somebody else aiming at you. And that's the power of what the Wild Weasel mission is, to get turn have you literally focus, turn on your radar, fire at us, reveal your position, and then you have a, a uh, anti-whatever-you come right back to haunt you anyway. So here we go. Ooh, Louisiana and Des Moines go down right there our team is hopefully uh coming back here but you never underestimate the power of a world of warships player willingness to throw the game so we always have to keep on our toes head on a swivel stay frosty and again continuously put the fight to the enemy meanwhile we're going to see if we can take out the carrier finally he reveals himself so not only do we shoot all his planes down but let's use our guns to take out his main uh, vessel right here and look at the power of the guns right there a long range right there still he damage is awesome now the top part of his armored deck right there is uh deflecting a lot of our shells non-pens right there but if we just aim a little bit lower we can hit that side panel of his superstructure and even his main body and that right there you can see the amount of damage we can do just with that alone just with he shells someone's saying hey shoot ap you know what i enjoy shooting he i want to start as many fires as i can right, meanwhile i'm getting kind of decent consistent damage with this and i don't want to break up the rhythm and let's see right there 19,000, and we are at 84,000 damage. 99,000. Let's see if we can break 100,000 in AA. Come on, baby. Send some planes at me. That's what I really love to do. I love to eat them up. Way to go right there on the torpedo hits, and go. Summers goes down. Power of gunboats and torpedoes. Very, very strong. I said the destroyer is the key component of the game. Here we go. Oh, finally, we're going to pass this 100,000 mark. we got airplanes coming in at us right now. AA is still on. Look, we're ticking up. Four, five, six airplane kills. 102,000 damage. And Louisiana is trying to push us. Another carrier. I mean, we literally had like three carriers in this game. Two Louisianas and a, a, uh, a Midway, I believe. Was it a Midway or a Malta? I forgot. Anyways, uh, we're going to see if we can continuously pump damage into the Louisiana. I like about the uh, Ragnar. It's 360 turret guns. No matter which way I turn, the guns are always facing the target and don't have to wait for those long 180 um, uh, uh, what's it called? Rotating times. Oh man, it's so toxic in the World of Worship days. Guys, you don't need to talk to smack on this. Look, it's just a game. We're having fun. You get nothing out of it. You're not getting paid to do this. Whatever. But anyways, let's keep shooting and I'll see if we put as much firepower on Louisiana as we can. He takes a fire at us and boom, he hits us with one shell rather than many. And that engine boost, like I said, is so devastating because you can slam on the brakes and throw off a lot of shots. He fires again because he's probably we're the only one spotted right now, probably because we're still firing. Yep, he misses that shot as well. Man, we are still pumping damage in this guy. I mean, even at long range, he just gives up. To have, you mean, around the 11 to 12 kilometer mark, I think a lot of people, players just really just give up because it's just not worth wasting your shots on a destroyer player unless you guys want to waste on your shots. Well, whatever, go for it. All right, let's see if we can get some more. Up, oh, no spotting there. And uh, here comes their carrier and takes out the Shimakaze. Last player of the game will be Wisconsin. So we did our part. Look, 102,000 damage. 145,000 in ship damage. So if you add it all up, we did 247,000 damage. I wish they would include airplane damage in the final total of the score, but they don't. They think that shooting airplanes down is a non-necessity or some kind of potential damage mark. So I disagree. If I'm shooting some kind of controlled weapon system in World of Warships, I should get credit for it as well. So 102,000 airplane damage is literally blowing up a battleship worth of airplanes. So let's get that. Wargaming, change that, okay? Make a petition, guys. Help us out to change some aspect of the game. If you're going to introduce carriers in the game let me at least get credit for 
uh, shooting down airplanes. Oh, he fires at us again. Louisiana loves shooting at the Ragnar because for some reason we are a, uh, a potent potable uh, against a, a player like uh, the Ragnar in Louisiana. Whatever. I don't know what I'm saying there, but yeah, I hope you're having fun. That was a throwback to SNL from back in the day of Sean Connery. And here we go, 1,000 damage. Can we get the final death blow on Louisiana? And bam, there it is, Arsonist as well. Look at that, 159,000 damage. And we survived the majority of the match right there. So, so powerful. Build will be at the end of the video, guys, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to switch over to another video with the Holland. But look at this, hey, hey, expert. That means I shot down 35 planes. Yeah, we definitely did. 46, 12 fires, ridiculous. And, uh, of, course, of course, we're probably, what, no, number two in the team? Yep, yep. Top. Look at how many airplanes. Oh, 1.3 potential. If I said you're above a million potential damage in a destroyer, that means you are annoying. And then number two, AA damage. Look at that. AA damage. 102,000 damage. That's a battleship of damage, guys. That's that's ridiculous on airplanes. Anyways, I digress. Let's get to the Holland video and my second favorite uh, AA platform as a destroyer player. All right, here we go. This is Islands of Ice in my least favorite battle mode, standard battle, which really just uh, encourages camping in the back of the map because all you do is either cap their, capture the flag point or you just kill every ship. And that, that this leads to just people sitting in the back the whole time. So I don't like this uh, game mode anyways, but uh, let's get right to it. So take a look at Holland right here. Uh, powerful Holland. Now, Holland was the actual, before the Ragnar, one of the best AA destroyers in the game. It literally was the uh, no clear sky zone where it, you couldn't fly into it. I mean, it was, I mean, me playing as a, a carrier player back in the day, I used to fly in Holland Flat Clouds, and it was just ridiculous. You couldn't see anything. And when you were just disoriented, you lost track of where all the flat clouds were, and then eventually you just got blasted out of the sky, especially with the defensive AA fire on there. And this thing is brutal, by the way. So uh, Holland... Uh, if you don't know what it is, tier 10 tech tree line on the European side. It's very, very powerful, very strong. Uh, torpedoes coming out of the thing at 95 knots max speed. If I, I have it built for it with a reload of 77 seconds, as you can see right there. So very, very strong. Going out to 15 kilometers, that's almost close to gearing uh, ranges. And Shimakaze, obviously, you can go way out there, but you can spot them from a mile away. These things, you really don't have much reaction time. 7.1 reaction time is fairly decent for not being deep water torpedoes. Got engine booth, heels, and defensive AA. Very, very strong. The guns reload at two seconds. So just as base guns. I haven't even built anything for the guns, and they're already at two second reload. So I like that a lot. Concealment's at 6.0 for very, very good concealment for what you need to do. And pretty much the thing I like about the Holland so much is the AA platform. You really can just leave the AA on like the Ragnar and just watch the airplanes fall out of the sky. That's exactly why I hate CV so much. So I'm going to play uh, the AA platform the best of my ability. Here are the guns. Look, two second reloads. And of course, uh, Rigolo. Uh, Rigolo is okay. I did a review on it. Uh, it's got better with the dispersions. And it, uh, or wait, this is the one with the sap. My bad. I was thinking of the other one. The A Rigolo has got the sap shells with the crawling smoke that follows. There's the sap shells right there. And last shell into him, and boom, there we get Splash one, first kill of the game for us. And uh, we get that kill, and... Yeah, Regola is it's actually a not a bad ship, especially with that sap. It's really, really powerful. So you don't want to play one-on-one -on -one with a Regola. You just want to stay away from it. Stay, let it sit in its own smoke and get uh, radared if it's necessary. But honestly, it's not good long range. For me, that's why I kind of keep that standoff uh, in the Holland because my guns do not beat the Regola. And plus, he's got 30,000 HP and I got 19,000 too. Again, I did not built for survivability because why? I'm a torpedo destroyer and I want to focus on the reloads and the speed of the torpedoes, which means I'm going to keep that at standoff distance and I'm not going to pick fights and long range uh, or long lasting gun engagements with destroyers so i'm going to try to stay far away as much as i can and really just engage in the the long battle and engage later down the road when uh, half the ships are down and again i'm my role is uh, the, the holland is really just to be that aa platform torpedo from range and they can use the guns as a last resort that's kind of the play style for me right now in the holland Right now we've got Janan, which is the uh, deep water torpedo machine gun tor uh, torpedo or cruiser. And we're just going to launch a couple torpedoes at him. Again, sitting in smoke, bad idea. Magnets for torpedoes, like I've always said. Nakamov is probably the one of the most broken uh, aircraft carriers in the game, like Malta and F FDR. Because, man, they only shoot, they only do one uh, strike at a time. And you li they're literally launching all of its planes, which means that you can only get one shot at getting all the AA to shoot into the, the Nakamov planes. And that's really 
it sometimes proves to be difficult because you don't get a second wave. I mean, once he um, gets that invincible... Oh, look at that. Nice kill right there, the Janon. Uh, second kill of our game right there. He's, again, sitting in smoke. Bad idea. Anyways, going back to Nakamov. Again, the Nakamov, you got to get all your AA in the first run of his uh, his attack run. And as he gets that invincibility period again, as he's making his attack run, you can't kill him. And then as he's retreating from the clouds, that's your last opportunity to kill him, and he won't come back around and fly through your flat clouds again. So that's the downside of the Nakamov, and very, very powerful in that regard. And I'm like, wow, why would you introduce this into the game where you only allow the aircraft carrier to do one full attack run and literally... You can only that's the only time you can shoot him down. Really bad, right? Uh, at least with me, he's continuously spotting me. That's why I hate the invincibility period because I, I'm continuously spotted by him, and in, during his invincibility period, when I can't shoot him, he's still spotting me, which is that, that's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Okay, here's the power of the AA right there. We got the defensive fire AA gone. Look, this is my only time to kill him, and again, he runs away. And if he did do an attack run, I would have to wait till invincibility period is over, and then that he could have. Uh, you know, attacked us, dropped ordnance on us, and we couldn't do anything about it. So, <laughs> downside there. Let's see if we can uh, come around this island here and see if we can spot. I mean, actually, I say we push right though. Half the team's dead. This is the proper time to push at this moment. I'm going to support my Shimakaze player up front, leading from the chart. Again, the shores lead the way, right? Look, gearing, Shimakaze gearing, leading everybody. All the shores are up front, leading the way, and that's exactly how you should be playing it. Your destroyers are the leaders, leading by example, leading from the front, leading with spotting, leading with torping, leading with guns, and also providing the AA, of course. So, that's me. Look at all those torpedoes taken right into the, the, the Wisconsin right there. Again, I think the battleship play is dead. You can't look at all the battleships. Look where they're at. How are you supposed to play this game anymore? Battleship players, you're just going to sit in the back and just take torpedoes all day. I mean, that, again, that, and not your fault. That's just the way technology and the weapon systems have, are designed. You can't spot any destroyer players. Your carriers can't do anything. We got AA. You got torpedoes galore. Literally, Shimakaze, Gearing, Gearing, and Holland. All torpedo boats. What are you going to do? Uh, and that's the downside. Although I complain about submarines all the time, at least uh, you can shoot back at me at the destroyer once I'm spotted or I shoot or do something. But again, in this mode standard battle, literally the only encouragement is to literally just stay in the back or push away or retreat. So the point of the game is to retreat the whole time. That means your game is dying because the, the destroyer is literally the weapon system that is with in conjunction with the carrier and submarine going to kill the game because the battleships can't do anything anymore and they can't, uh, you know, mitigate the damage. There's, their survivability is literally getting down in tier 10 because the weapon systems are getting more efficient, more effective. And again, I, I feel that literally it is almost, look, what are you supposed to do? Everybody's going to run away and fire your, your salvo for every 25 to 30 seconds and try to hope to hit something and you may miss. That's the downside. So I think Battleship play is dying and it possibly is dead at this point. Look, taking torpedoes up the ass right there. And now everybody else, with the help of destroyer players, are just dominating everything. Our battleships are still in the back. Uh, I got one sleeve in Ohio at least attempting to push behind islands. Well, you can see the bulk of the damage will be from the destroyer player. Look out, torpedoes like crazy, and it's just a torpedo fest at this point. It's a shooting gallery. I'm sorry. Is this what it feels like? But you know what? Sitting here as a Holland is really enjoyable because um, I don't have to fire my guns. I don't have to take damage. And honest, I'm just literally just the uh, SAM site AA platform for <laughs> my area. I, my responsibility is to prevent anybody from coming in and attacking aircraft, using attack aircraft to kill my battleships and cruiser players. Look, even though I'm attacking the Trump. The Tromp has these automated dive bombers, really, right? Which you can't really shoot down sometimes because they get invulnerability as well on their attack run, and that's ridiculous. And then I don't get any too many points uh, from shooting their planes because they get invent. Or I'm sorry. Um, oh, here's a nice shot right there on the Prussian. I was saying that the Trump has in unlimited. That's what I was looking for. The word unlimited airstrikes on me, and all I can do is just keep shooting them down. Watch this. Here come the airstrikes. So oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, six kilometer damage. Yay, I killed some. I killed some. I killed some. But he can still launch more. And those attack planes even have invincibility period right there. Look, see, nothing's happening to him. And once he's above me, once he exits the invulnerability period, then does the damage actually tick back on pin on whale. As well as I don't get credit for shooting down his planes. The Tromp planes, although I see damage, they're not ticking up on my, my damage meter up there. Just take a look at that. Unless I'm wrong, guys, leave me in the comments below. Like, am I getting damage for shooting down airstrikes? from Tromps or Gudenlaus. It doesn't seem like it, right? But I do damage on the screen. It looks like I'm, I'm doing it. I only get damage from carriers or hybrid ships. So another flaw right there. Let's see here. What is left? RPF is indicating there's something in between me and the Schlieflin. So there's no way you can see. Look at all the damage I'm doing. Uh, I'm shooting now. The damage taking up, I believe, is something else. Look at all the damage we're doing on the Tromp. And that doesn't count towards anything, I think. It's just only, look at the, oh, 8,000 damage right there. 36,000 damage. Wow. And we get the continuous A damage increase because we have um, the commander that does it, Swirsky. Swirsky. I can't pronounce his name. Correct me. 
and yeah, Jersey Swirsky, something like that. He gets AA damage from every time you get a, above a certain amount of kills. You get a boost in your AA, and now we can kill uh, a planes even better now. Okay, watch the Nakamov come in right now. We're going to get uh, all the damage from 37,000 and see how much damage we can do. Boom, here goes the spotter planes. And kill, kill, kill. Let's see if we keep killing them. Yep, there's a bunch of damage right there. For now, there's the invincibility. Oh, no, wait, still shooting? Nope, that's his spotter plane, I believe, or something's ticking up. And we killed a lot right there. Maybe he doesn't have an invincibility period. I, you correct me if I'm wrong there as well. All right, so we got Trump right here going in on fire of the Trump, right? So this is the guy that's been launching all those airstrikes. If you don't know, look at the Trump. Trump is a pretty fun destroyer. I just did a video about it. And 12-kilometer uh, airstrikes now. Again, every time he launches the airstrikes, you can shoot and kill him down. But I don't believe I get credit for him. Again, let me know if I'm wrong about that. But it doesn't seem like I get credit for it. Hey, look, AA Expert, we shot down 35 planes right there. Way to go. And here we are. Look at that. I'm shooting planes down. So I do. it does seem like I'm getting shots by somebody. Or I'm starting to get damage from the Tromp planes, looks like. So, yep, there it is. Splash 3, killing now the Tromp. So I did see damage tick up from his airstrike. So maybe I do get damage from it. So maybe I was wrong. Look at all that damage right there. We're pumping into it. Yep, keep the clear skies over the Kremlin. Let's see if we can shoot as many planes as we can as soon as he... Look, the invincibility. Look, nothing's sticking up. Nothing's happening. Nothing. And there it is. 6,000, boom, right off the bat. So that's the good thing about the Holland. Those flak bursts are pretty deadly. So you can see the invincibility period right at that moment. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening after his attack run was over. He tried to climb out of it, and boom, all that you know, all the flak bursts hit him all at once, and he got 6,000. So 67,000 damage right there. That's a cruiser level amount of damage right there on airplanes. Four kills. Holy crap, I didn't know that. Four kills, 44,000 damage in the last 16 minutes of the game. And uh, we're pretty much rounding it out there. But look at that, guys. Holland and Ragnar, one of the best AA platforms as a destroyer player. I am not afraid of airplanes in these boats and or ships. And I literally just keep the AA on the whole time. And I welcome carriers attack me. So, as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, bubble below at 4,000 subs. Do another premium giveaway. And the builds will be at the end of the video right there. 47,000 planes. Not many torpedo hits right there. But we get four kills. A lot of floodings. And where are we at in the team score? Yep, number two, again, for supporting our teammates with AA damage. Look at this. They should literally add this onto my score. I did a literally 67, a cruiser level amount of damage to that. And torpedoes are okay. Damage with guns. We killed some of the people we got. Prussian, the Jadon, Trump, and Reg yeah, we killed two destroyers and one of each right there. So uh, not much potential. Nobody saw us that much, but we were spawning. And yep, we did a lot of damage that way just by supporting with AA. Look at all the planes we shot down. Look at that. So we shot down eight bombers. That's from the Tromp right there. That's, I mean, we should literally count a damage for that. I think that's what the case is. There's a lot of planes shot down, like I said, and a lot of spotters as well. So anyways, hope you guys are doing well. If you see me out there, say hi. And as always, until next time, you guys stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.